All right, well, welcome back to my podcast. As you probably already know, I am Christopher Shannon. I am the broker owner of TSG Realtors here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, Today, I just kind of wanted to hit on the effects of inflation as it pertains to the real estate market. Um, A lot of what I've been hearing lately, and it it really, um, really irritates me, is inflation is up, interest rates are up, the market's going to crash, we're in a recession, just all kinds of Debbie Downer type things. Um, Some of it's correct, a lot of it's wrong in my opinion, but um, I'm going to kind of walk you through how inflation actually should and probably will affect the real estate market. Now obviously there's no one size fits all for this, every market's going to be a little bit different. Um, every scenario is going to be a little bit different, but the one thing I can tell you, and I think we have a graph for this somewhere, but over the last, let me pull that up on my phone real quick. Give me a second because, um, I think it's the last six recessions. Um, pulling it up. Sorry. This is great podcast right now. I should have had this ready. Uh, there we are. So over the last six recessions, when we've had a uh, an actual recession in the United States, the last six times, we've only had a dip in housing prices or equity um, twice. Once was in 1991. It went down 1.9%. And the other time was 2008. I think everybody's familiar with that. That had its own circum own different circumstances. There was predatory lending. Basically, if you walked into a mortgage officer's office and you had a pulse and you said, I make X amount of money, they were going to give you some sort of predatory loan, um, you know, adjustable rate interest, all kinds of different stuff. So the other four times in 1980, 1981, 2001, and 2020, every... Um, all the house prices have went up at least 3.5%, 6.1% in 80, 3.5% in 81, 6.6% in 01, and in 2020 they went up 6%. So we're talking about inflation. Inflation is somewhere what, like 7, 8, 9% right now. Um, what this does is makes everything more expensive, just in layman's terms, at least as far as I understand it. I'm not an economics major. I'm a I'm a realtor. I'm a broker. I sell houses for a living. I buy houses for a living. I sell houses for a living personally and for other help other people with it. Uh, what I do know is that when inflation is higher, uh, the savvy investors, at least in my experience, are buying more property. Property and rent and those types of things um, they're a hedge against inflation. If you think about it, when things get more expensive, everything's going to get more expensive. So your house is going to get more expensive. Your gas is going to get more expensive. Your gas is going to get more expensive. Your coffee is going to get more expensive. So why, again, I, I said the house, why wouldn't your house get more expensive? Um, housing prices generally rise. Uh, we have two examples in the six recessions that we've had that are, you know, um, noted. Um, six recessions only four twice have the uh, housing prices went down and one of them was just really due to just predatory lending um as things get more and more expensive and housing prices rise the biggest thing is you also have rent prices rent rises so when when we're looking at inflation and we have you know eight nine seven eight nine percent inflation that that's going to bring everything the cost of everything up not just it's not just going to be limited to your grocery store or your, your restaurant, stuff like that. It's also going to hit the housing market. Now, all that to be said is real estate is, is always going to be, historically has always been your safest investment over, over time. It's, it's not a get rich scheme. It's not a get rich. You're not going to buy something and we're not going to have the same types of things that we've had over the last few years where you can buy a house and a year later you can sell it for $30,000 more. That's just, those days are coming to an end. Um, the reason I don't see this this market crashing is we're just so low on inventory. Inventory is just, I think here in Columbus, we're about 3,000 houses on the market right now. That gives us probably month and a half to two months of inventory. That just basically means if 
anything and everything on the market sells and nothing new comes to the market, we have enough inventory to last for a month and a half, two months. That means nothing else comes onto the market. A healthy market, a balanced market, a buyer's and a seller's market combined, um, not a seller heavy market, not a buyer heavy market. We should have about six months of inventory here in Columbus. That means we should have probably eight to 9,000 houses on the, on the MLS at any point in time for a healthy, even balanced market. Um, over in the United States, we're about 3.8 million houses low. Um, as far as inventory goes. So this isn't something that's just going to magically fix itself over a week or two. Interest rates going up to 6% is not going to make the market slow down. We need inventory. Until we get inventory, whether that's through new builds, whether that's through people buying and selling, we're still going to be leaning towards a seller's market. Now we can take it very uh, micro and do it. look at uh, the Columbus market. Columbus, like I said, we have around 3,000 houses on the market. We have a lot of stuff going on here. There's fashion, there's breweries, there's, there's Intel, there's Facebook, there's Google. There's just so many things going on here that we have about 72 people moving, moving to the city every single day. Now, the one thing we're not doing, we're not making more land. So there's only so much that we can expand. So Columbus as a whole, we're a growing city. Um, 72 people moving here a day, 3,000 houses on the market. Healthy market, like I said, should be uh, about eight or 9,000 houses. It used to be 7,000, but we've grown so much. We've went from about 1.8 to 2.2 million people in the city and the suburbs. Um, we're not making more land. They're not making more land. So. This is not going to be something that rectifies itself over overnight. Uh, a lot of people are talking about all these foreclosures that are going to start flooding the market. Here's the issue with that. Um, I don't remember the source I saw, but it's a very it was a credible source. It may have been Forbes. I can't remember, like I said. But uh, seventy percent of America has at least forty percent equity in their houses. This is nothing like two thousand eight, where again, like I had said before, there was predatory loans. There was just bad loans giving out. If you had a pulse, you were going to get a loan. With so much of the country having so much equity, your house isn't going to get foreclosed on. If you get into tough times, you're just going to sell your house. Um, you're not going to have to go short sale. You're not going to have to do any of that stuff. You're going to have enough equity to be able to pay your realtor, to be able to pay your chat, your taxes, to do everything that you need to do to sell it. Uh, this should help keep people, you know, ahead of the curve. It, it's it, it's unfortunate people will start not being able to pay their bills because that will have an effect with inflation and employment rates and stuff like that. But the good thing is we've gained so much equity back over the last few years that people are ahead. Um, there's a lot of people that think that we are uh, gaining equity too quickly. I would counteract that and I would tell you, you look at 2008 when you had a $300,000 house in 2008 and all of a sudden overnight it dropped to 200000 or 150000 You lost all that value in the house, you know, 50, 60, or 40, 50% of your value. So we're now 14 years off from that. So are we... Are we gaining equity too fast or are we just catching up from the trajectory we should have been on for those five to six to seven really, really hard years? Personally, I think if you look at it, there's a pretty good chance we would have ended up around the same point where we are now if we would have just kept rising at the steady two to three percent year over year appreciation gain that is historical in real estate. So there's a, there's a lot of things that go into this. What I can tell you is the smart investors that I know, they're still buying property. Because like I said, uh, property is a hedge against inflation. When things, when inflation gets higher, things get more expensive. That's going to be your house prices. That's going to be your rent. That's going to be all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't mean that you can just go willy-nilly buy whatever you want. You have to be more strategic about it. So we will be a lot more strategic about what we're buying moving forward. But we're not going to stop buying. If I stop buying, it just puts me dead in the water. Um, I don't personally see in Columbus housing prices going down anytime in the foreseeable future. I could be completely wrong. I don't have a crystal ball sitting here. But just knowing all the things that are going on here in Columbus, like I said earlier, Google, Intel, Facebook, 
uh, breweries, the fashion down in the short north, just all sorts of different things going on. 72 people moving here a day. I don't think there's any way that you can really tell me or sell me on the bottom's going to drop out of real estate right now. Uh, we're looking over the next 5 to 10 to 15 years to have exponential growth here in Columbus. Uh, the builders don't seem to be able to keep up as much as they were able to before, which is also attributing to and contributing to the low inventory. So going, kind of going back to what we're doing, like I said, we're buying strategically. We're not going to stop buying. Um, we really ramped it up. I say we, I'm talking my wife, my wife and I and some other investors that I work with. When COVID hit, I sat back for three, four weeks and I didn't do much. Um, I just kind of reassessed everything and I decided that that was the time to take advantage of the market. People started to get scared. Things started to keep, things started to kind of halt for a little bit. But all in all, COVID was probably one of the best times I think in my recent memory. Because in 2008, I wasn't. I was just out out of college. I didn't have the money. COVID for me was a good time to start making money. Start pushing the envelope. Um, as, as far as our brokerage, we hired an assistant, we bought an office, um, and then we bought property, we flipped property, we ramped up from doing two to four flips a year to um, seven, eight properties a year. This year we're on track to hit you know, 15 to 20. Um, I look at this, this inf the inflation going up as another opportunity to continue to make money. Uh, even if you own a house, I saw um, somebody posted this the other day. Even if you own a house today and it's worth three hundred thousand dollars, and tomorrow the bottom drops out of it, and now it's worth one hundred and fifty dollars, does that really affect you? You most likely either have it paid off in cash, or you have a fixed rate mortgage on it, and your fixed rate mortgage is probably in the three to four percent range, maybe lower, maybe a little bit higher. But just because your property loss value doesn't change your mortgage payment. It sucks that you lost $150,000 of equity right away like that. But at the same time, if you're not looking to sell right away, it really doesn't affect you. Uh, so as long as you're in a fixed rate mortgage and you're paying your bill and you're not planning to move in the next you know, five to 10 years, even if the bottom drops out of the market, you're not going to be in much financial peril. You're just not going to have the equity, but equity is basically paper money. It means nothing unless you sell the house. So we will continue to buy. We will continue to push the envelope. This is only our fourth episode of this kind of thing. I could be pushing the envelope for the next three months and maybe on our 15th, 16th, I'll have to sit here and tell you I'm dead broke and I was complete wrong. I don't necessarily think that's, hap that's going to happen. I can tell you over the last two years, by strategically buying property, by pushing the envelope during COVID, like we're going to do while this inflation is high, we've put $2 million to our net worth over probably the last two, two and a half years. Um, and we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep pushing to see what, what we can do, what we can't do. Um, we're not going to go willy-nilly, just buy whatever we can. Prices are getting more expensive. The numbers change. The numbers are constantly moving. But like I said in the beginning, with inflation, rent prices rise equity rises, the values of your home rise. So it's not a bad time to buy if you're doing it strategically. That is probably the one thing I want you to take away from this is do it strategically, push the envelope where you're able to do it, and just don't over leverage yourself. I always fight with myself right lately. We have a bunch of money tied up in, uh, in property. It's good. It's good notes. They're good. It's good money. It's good money tied up. But we're trying to leverage as much as we can so we can continue to push the envelope because our goal down the road is to not have to work every single day. Um, I would like to, we, I think we talked on one of these episodes earlier that I, I've checked off a lot of these goals that I've had for the last five, six years. My new goal is to be able to hand down to my kids generational wealth. And I know the one way I'm going to be able to do that is through pushing hard strategically, no matter whether the inflation is high, whether inflation is low, whether the bottom drops out, whether we continue these 7 to 10 to 12% appreciation years, year over year. Whatever we're doing, there's a plan that you can do. You can make money. So 
just continually be strategic. Reach out to me if you have any questions, if you have any concerns. Again, this is my thoughts on inflation and how it's going to affect the market. I'm not an economics major. I'm not as smart as half the people I know, but this is the way I look at it, the way I see it, and what I'm doing right now. So we'd love for you to follow, like, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. We'll continue to hit some of these topics. Whether you agree with me or you don't, doesn't matter. This is the way I see it. This is how I'm going to do my stuff. And hopefully we can give you some tips moving forward that can help you. We'll see you next time.